Hi, I'm Andy Alden with the International Water Institute, and we're going to walk you through how to calibrate your sand before river watch season. So first, you want to have a calibration sheet. Uh, you can go ahead and fill out the date, the, the serial number, the serial number for the hand pad. Most of you have a sand within, with a rapid pulse membrane on it. It's, it's the dissolved oxygen probe. So what we're going to do first, because this needs to burn in before we can calibrate it, so we're going to remove this O-ring. You can see that. Pull out the old membrane and that can be thrown away. Um, we're gonna, we'll grab one of these little sand discs and you can see how there's two uh, electrodes on there, the, the metal parts. We're just gonna shine those up. Over time, these can get uh, a little bit tarnished. You're gonna have a KCL solution. You're gonna open it up and just put few beads on it should kind of bubble up and you'll see a meniscus on the top we're just going to kind of pull this membrane straight down over put a, put pressure on it grab it with one hand and then put the membrane on top want to make sure there's no air bubbles uh, and then then we can come through and trim the excess part of the membrane because you don't want it to cover up the ph bulb and other parts of the the uh, dissolved oxygen membrane is ready to go. Um, this will help burn in while we're doing the other uh, pram the other probes, and calibrating those. So we always start with conductivity first. After this, what we're going to do is we've got our calibration cup. So this is a rinse, which is old calibration solution that we used to calibrate last time. Just need a little bit in here. Close it up, rotate it, invert it a few times. All right, so we do two rinses with a rinse. Then we'll actually do one, one rinse with a fresh solution that we'll use to calibrate it. All right, now, time, now comes a time where we're gonna fill this calibration cup up a little bit fuller and put it on. So those probes are fully submerged, submersed in the solution. Make sure that can stand up. So then you'll pull up your hand pad and turn that on. Um, we're gonna go into the sand menu and then calibrate. Then we'll go down, go to the conductivity option because that's what we're calibrating here. And then we always calibrate specific conductance. So on here it says SP Cond. You'll click on that. Each bottle of solution has a set point. So this is 1,000 microsiemens per centimeter. So that's a, a unit of measure for conductivity or specific conductance. Uh, on most hand pads, you'll actually have to enter that value in uh, millisiemens per centimeter. So what we do there is 1.000, 1, uh, 1,000 microsiemens, one millisiemen. So We'll enter that, hit enter. The value should be pretty stable if your probes are good. Um, if, if they're really jumping around or they're, they're really low or really high, um, usually really low, it'll indicate that there's actually not enough solution, so you might have to add some. Um, this is reading right at 986 microsiemens, so that's to be expected, 986. We're gonna write that uh, as our pre-value. So we'll write that in here as a pre-value for the conductivity. Then we'll hit the calibrate button on the sand, and it should lock in right at 1,000 microsiemens. So we'll write that as our post value or after cal. And before we move on, we're actually going to get the temperature. So we're reading right around 19.3 degrees Celsius. And that's going to come in handy when we do the pH 7 calibration in a second. We'll hit continue. So we're done with the conductivity calibration, but before we move on, we'll go back to the sand main menu and go down to the advanced option right at the bottom. We'll hit enter on that and go into the cal constants menu. Then you'll get a conductivity cal constant. So here it's 5.00709. 
We'll write that down on our calibration sheet. Do a triple distilled water rinse between conductivity and pH. So then, similar to the conductivity rinse, we have a pH 7 rinse, so this is a solution that was used to calibrate in the past. All right, and then now we're ready to calibrate for pH 7. So you can fill it up. Again, the probes are fully submersed. We've got the temperature and conductivity and then the pH probe right here. And we need to have them both submersed because pH is temperature dependent. We're gonna go to the pH menu. And we always do a two point calibration. So we're gonna be using pH 7 and pH 10. So we wrote down 19.3 degrees Celsius. Um, each bottle of, of solution has its own uh, way to show this, but we're closest to 20 degrees Celsius, so that gives us a pH value of 7.02 for what this solution should be at that temperature. So we're going to go ahead and enter 7.02, and we write that as our uh, temperature adjusted value on the calibration sheet. So 7.07 .07 is what I'm going to go with for the pre. I'm going to hit calibrate. It locked in at 7.02. It should lock in right around that value, plus or minus 0 0.01. Below the pH value, which shows 7.02, 7.01, it's going back and forth right now. Um, negative 38.6.5 now is what it's reading for the millivolts. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down uh, in the millivolts range. And going from pH 7 to pH 10, uh, we don't need to rinse with distilled water because you're going from pH 7, distilled water has a pH of 7. So we're just going to make sure we do a good triple rinse with pH 10 solution. Alright, so our temperature conductivity and our pH probes are submersed in the solution. We're going to use that 19.3 degrees Celsius again. So we're going to round up to 20 because that's what it's closest to. So 10.05 is what we're going to calibrate uh, the 10 solution to. So again, enter 10.05, not 10.00. We'll write that down as our temperature adjusted value. 10.05. Mine's already locked in at 10.02 and it's not changing. I'm going to go with that as my before calibration value. 10.02. I'm going to hit calibrate. And it goes right to 10.05. So again, we're telling these probes that that is what this solution should read. It was very close, but we're going to make sure it's very accurate at uh, exactly 10.05. Just like with the pH 7, we're going to write down the millivolts, so we're at negative 209.1. We do our dissolved oxygen calibration out in the field, so um, for, for an example here today, I'm going to show you how to calibrate it in the lab, but you would do this when you get to the first site. Every time you go out, you'll actually want to just get a little bit of tap water. We, we really just need it to be a saturated environment, um, so a soaked sponge, some people use that. Some people wrap their sand in a wet towel. Um, the loosely fitted calibration cup is a good way to do it. So we're gonna go into, this sand has three probes, so we're gonna go into the only one we haven't done yet, dissolved oxygen. We're gonna calibrate on percent saturation. We write down dissolved oxygen in milligrams per liter, and that's what we report to the state. We calibrate based on the saturated percentage. So. We, sh we know that inside of this calibration cup, it should be close to 100. And we're going to, so that makes it easier to calibrate too. Dissolved oxygen, saturated percent. Then we need a, an accurate barometric pressure. A lot of hand pads have a built-in barometer. This one does not, but I just, I looked it up. 733.5 is our barometric pressure. We're going to type that in. 
most of them, if they do have a, a barometer, it'll auto populate on here. So you won't have to type anything in. You can just hit enter. So 116.2, it's reading. I'm going to hit calibrate because it's stable. I'm going to write down that pre before value. And then it calibrated to 96.5. So that will be my after. We'll want to write down the DO charge, which displays right here. So 49.2 is the value. Uh, the last thing we need to write down, uh, we'll go back into the advanced menu and back to the cal constants. And we're going to write down the DO gain. So here it is 1.00921. And that again is within the range of 0.7 to 1.4. Some of you may have a different type of sond. So this is a 6600. There's a few of these being used by Riverwatch schools. The main difference on this sond is that it has a, uh, an optical dissolved oxygen, mem dissolved oxygen probe. So there's no membrane. It has this wiper, which so for this, you don't have to change a membrane. Uh, you can just calibrate this out in the field. So a couple of pointers is that you should never accept a calibration if it says it's out of range. If it's out of range, it's usually because there's not enough solution or because the probe is uh, either no good or it's not installed properly. So if you have questions and you just you don't know what to do, call one of the your Riverwatch uh, support staff and we'll help you out.